emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to part four of our build of the MPC 124th 20... No, that's wrong. Start again. Ugh. MPC 148th 22 inch Eagle Transporter from Space 1999 for emodels.co.uk. Yeah, I only fluffed it once. Never mind. How are you doing, everyone? Hello, hello. Welcome to part four. Now, uh, in the last episode, you'll remember that we finished off the command module. We got it all completely built, so it's just awaiting painting now. The next step is the T-spine, the backbone of the whole craft. Uh, and in the instructions, this is step six, seven, and eight. Uh, now, what I've done, I've gone ahead and got all the bits ready for this. Uh, we have two side parts for one side, two side parts for the other side. We have 10 long cross braces, cross braces. 10 short cross braces and two of these I-beam type cross braces. Uh, and if you're wondering why I've got this, bit of advertising, why I've got this here, it's a glass chopping board and this will become apparent very shortly why we need this. Now I'm a bit nervous about this because this is the step in the process where if I get this wrong, the whole thing goes horribly wrong, as, as, as was the nose. So yeah, so I need to get this right. So I've been a little bit worried about this bit. It seems simple, but there you go. Uh, now, what I've gone ahead and done is I have denubbed and de seamlined all these parts. It took me about an hour and a half. Uh, when you get these parts, there is a seam line all around the outside, all around the inside, and on both sides of all these little cross braces here. Every surface has a seam line going all the way around, so you have to take your time getting the seam line off. There are also um, some ejector pin holes dotted along the length of these you can't see them here these are actual lugs for pegs but there are little ejector pin marks now thankfully with this kit first of all the plastic is really soft so sanding it's dead easy and second of all the ejector marks are kind of very very shallow in fact so shallow that you don't need to fill them you can just sand them flat so that's what i've done instead of filling them with filler or a, a sprue goo um, i've just sanded them flat so you can't see them now so i am liking on this kit the the thing of so far anywhere I've had an ejector pin mark like a little circle recess or dimple I can just send it away so that's great um, to remove the seam lines uh, you can use either uh, a normal hobby knife or I've got a specific seam line remover from AN brand I won't show the other side it's got the name on I just find this easier because it's got a big thick solid blade and doesn't flex but you can use your, your hobby knife and all you're doing is you're getting the seam line and you're just 45 degrees just dragging the blade along to get rid of it. I just find it easy with the other tool because this blade, I think it's the end then, God, Tony would have been having fits. The blade is flexible. So I do find occasionally it tends to gouge or scrape and it, it takes longer to remove it. So if you've got um, something like a blade, but it's thick and solid like that, you can see there it's, it's quite thick. I don't want to show the name off. It's quite thick, but anything like that, that's got a nice sort of sharp, it's not sharp, it's not a blade. It's just got a nice 90 degree sharp edge, 45 degree. So I use that, but it doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, you could sand them off, but that would take you approximately all the time in the world. <sighs> so, what steps do we have? Step six, glue the two halves together for each side, times two. Step seven, put in the I-beams and w uh, two of the small cross braces and two of the large cross braces just to get everything in the right position. 
and then the last step is just to slot in all these other ones. Now there is something you need to be aware of. These two cross beams have these slits at either end. You have to make sure they're in the right position. So the one that goes at the front, the slit has to be at the back, and the one that goes at the back, the slit has to be at the front. I think this is where the screws will go later on to lock the passenger module in place or something like that. So I need to make sure they're in the right place. So let me get everything ready and we'll crack on. Okay, so the first step is to glue the two sides together. I'll make the two side parts. And this is fairly straightforward. We just have two adjoining parts and you have little lugs and little holes that those lugs go into like that. So nice and straightforward. Now, this is why we need this glass cutting mat. My workbench is not necessarily perfectly flat and these need to be straight. And all this assembly needs to be straight and true. So this is why we're using this cutting mat because it guarantees me a nice flat surface. Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed. So this part is quite easy. We're gonna take our Tamiya Extra Thins and quite easily, quite simply, we're just gonna put some glue into the little gaps. Now I've not put glue in there to start with because this glue, as I've said many times before, is thin enough that it will work its way into the little gap and down between the two parts. So that should do everything I need it to do. A little bit more maybe. And I want it to be a little bit flexible because I've got the combobulation to do. So I'm just going to push those together make sure they're nice and flat give it a minute now this is where it gets challenging now and i need to move myself around so i can do this what we need to do is we need to add two of these i beams two big beams and two small beams so this is where it gets interesting this is where we have to herd some cats so there's no real difference between the front and the back, they're both exactly the same. I think. Hole, 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 hole. Yeah, they're exactly the same. Uh, I hope. Yes, just double checking on the instructions. Uh, yes, we have those the right way around. I think. Yep, yeah, cool, right, so the next step. This is gonna be the front, so we need to make sure this has the instructions faces towards the back so what we need to do is somehow figure out how we're going to do this so this needs to go in one it needs to go in one two three four they've actually conveniently numbered the holes along the bottom here so one two three four so it needs to go there it needs to be on the third cross beam along. One, two, three. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So that needs to go here. All right, way up. Now this is where it gets a little bit fiddly. So this could go horribly wrong. If you haven't, if you haven't seen this bit, it's because it went wrong and it got so fiddly I had to film it separately. So we're just going to loosely put it in there for now with a little bit of the glue, just so it doesn't move just to get it in place and then it'll fall out because of course it will we need to do now I just need it to not fall out every time I move it two three four do the same glue in the same holes on the other side and this is where my head may come into shot I need to somehow get this into those holes oops oh there you go straight away failure and carnage yeah, nobody said this would be easy. Let's try a different attack. Try it this way around. Give it a second. Let it do its thing. Get some glue in there. Let's try it the other way. No. Hello. I have a plan. I have a plan, a cunning plan. I have a book. Move these out of the way. I have a book. <sighs> Let's try again. So we need to get that in there. Now the glue's going to stay workable for a little while, so it'll be still be sticky. 
if I put that there, I can hold that, I can line up the holes, I can line up the holes, he says, not lining up the holes. Okay, so that should sit there for a second. Need to get some glue in there. Where's me glue? There's me glue. This is very tricky. So try imagine trying to do this on camera as well. It's uh, even more tricky. Without getting your head in shot, which is probably happening non-stop constantly. Okay, so that's there. That's not exactly the right angle for it, but that's where we're going to sort this out in a second. Because now we need to put one of these little top pieces on as a spacer. And we need to do it, where do we do it? The very first hole. So we can do it here. This will give us the top angle. So we know exactly how far apart these things need to be. Plunk. Oops, Daisy. No, oh, that's all gone horribly wrong. Come back. Right, where are you? Come back. This is not easy at all. Hello. Uh. That should go in there. It just gives us a little bit of the idea of the distance. And get that glue in there. Okay, so that's there. Let's make sure everything's in. Everything appears to be in. Oh, squish. So now what I can do is get one on the bottom as well. So down here, which I can't actually see, but I can figure out where it is. This is getting challenging now. This needs to go, oops, Daisy. Very frustrating filming this. This needs to go, I can't get my hand under there. Let's do another top one. Top one is at the other end. So I'm gonna put my thumb there to hold it. Now I have to slide this. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to rehearse this before I do it, so, because you just have to do it. Now, as I say, this glue doesn't take too long to set, but it doesn't set straight away. So it does mean I've got a little bit of a while to fiddle with it and adjust it. So make sure that goes in there. And these beams do have chamfered edges, so there's a right way and a wrong way around. I hope this is on camera, probably not. There we go. Perfect. Okay, that's that there. Get some glue in there. Now what I need to do is give it a second and I need to do something very daring and that is turn it the other way up because then it'll make life easier for the... Ooh, no, need to leave it longer than that then, don't I? Hello. So there's no secondary bar here holding it in place, so to hold that for a minute. Go on, there you go. Get in. Get in. Okay, so I need to leave that for a second. I need to get this other eye beam in. So, I want to be able to turn this upside down somehow. I'm going to get my head in shot, sorry. Blowing, blowing. See if I can do this without disrupting the whole thing. Yes, huge success, almost. Almost huge success. Like I say, because the glue is still workable, it's helping me out. So this one, the hole needs to be that end. So one, two, three, four. One, two, four. And this needs to go one, two, three, four, there and there. It needs to go in like that. I hope this is on camera. That goes there. Give it a splodge of glue. Okay, 
push it together. A bit more glue in this top one. Okay, right, now I should be able to turn this over with no major dramas. I hope. Don't make a fool of me. There we go. Right, so that is on there. So they are in. There's still some flex there, which is good. So what I need to do now, I need to do the end parts as well, actually, so I need to turn it over again. Oops. Carefully. Okay, so we've got two end pieces. Let's get these on. You can't imagine how stressful this is. It's very stressful. Doing it on camera. Because I've got to pay attention to what I'm doing. Make sure it's all in shot. Try not to screw it up. And make sure I'm talking and being interesting at the same time. So you've not just got dead air. Because nobody likes dead air. That one's not going together very well. Let's have a fight with this one. Hold that one for a second and you can move in a bit. There we go. It's important to try and keep it on the flat surface just so everything stays nice and straight. Okay, this, this end is not cooperating, but it may do shortly. Once we get the other spaces on the top, it should start to cooperate. So I'll get the one in the other end. Now I always advocate never using super glue if you can avoid it. It's never the best glue to use, well very rarely anyway. So if this was super glue you're using right now, apart from the fact you don't need to use super glue on a plastic kit, you'd also be finding that all this would have set and you'd have no wiggle room and no play room. You'd have no way of adjusting anything. So something like this that dries quickly. I mean, to me, extra thin dries quickly, but it's still malleable for a while. And that's the beauty of it. You can still play with it a little bit. I'm going to turn this over. You get an idea for the size of this thing now. And what we have to do next is get these little top parts on. Uh, it does say, dry fit each part in place and apply liquid cement to the joint, allowing the capillary action to bond the part. You can't really do it with super glue unless it's really thin. Install all parts M44, the top ones, before beginning to install parts M45, the bottom ones. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight parts, so we need to dry fit these first. Now this may be a little bit of a struggle because we're going to have to push and pull a little bit. But that's fine. That's why we like the fact the glue has some flex to it. Because I've got to push this up. Ugh, hello. That wasn't supposed to happen. I've got to push and pull a little bit to get these things to go in. Oh. It's all just making a fool of me now. You know, never work with kids, children, and over fiddly complicated model kits. I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there. I know it doesn't say to do this. Sometimes you have to go off the beaten track. Just so it doesn't fall out every time I try and put the next one in. Just put that one in there. And like I said, these parts are slightly chamfered. So make sure you get the chamfer right so they make a nice seal. It's like a kind of quill shape at the end not just a straight rod okay, that, oh hello get back in get in your box and some adjustment means you'll get these lining up perfectly after a little while what well, may not line up first of all but then it's because one of the side pieces isn't quite straight or something like that this bit's quite at the bottom here oh hello I'm having issues with this one at this end now All the fun of the fair. Okay, so get that in there. Make sure everything's lined up. This top one's come out. Fantastic. Right, where's my tweezers? Making me get my tweezers out now and everything. Oh, little, little thing. I nearly swore then. Nearly, but not quite. Get in there. Let's rotate it around so it fits. One's coming out again, so we're going to have to fight with that one. Ah, 
that one at the end wasn't lined up quite right so it had an odd angle that's why it wasn't sticking so again make sure everything's lined up and all the sort of chamfers are in the right place now this one there you go that's that one in so now I've got that end piece sorted here these are actually cooperating a bit more one two one two three four five one two three four four five there we go panicking panicking didn't think i had enough then now this one these ends are a bit further apart so this is a bit more forgiving if i can get more than one in that'd be a bit faster wouldn't it to Ooh, no. yeah you're gonna have to glue as you go despite what it says in the destructions dry fit it in place and then glue it and then move on to the next one because otherwise every time you put the next one in the last one's going to fall out which is not awesome i'll tell you what tony you've got your tank tracks this is my tank tracks Yes, get this one in. In you go. You need to go back up again. Don't fall out. Oh, do you know? It's a problem having them so close together. Right, get in that little hole. Oh, this is the worst. Right, you get glued. Get glued. You get out. Right, so hold that one in place the best I can. Get this one in. Now I'm going to be quite generous with the glue. Again, a lot of it will disappear into the into the little gaps. But if you do get any blobs of glue left over, don't panic. You could just sand it. Okay, so that's those in. This end's coming out again because it's spun round again. Stay where I put you, you little thing. I could have just kind of edited this, but I'd rather show you the actual process. That way you get to see me faff with it so that you don't need to necessarily have to faff with it because you can plan a bit better. Because I've never done this before. Of course, I can't, I don't know how it's going to go, so. You can use the benefit of my hindsight. Hindsight. If you take that literally, it means seeing out of your backside. That doesn't seem very practical or pleasant. Okay, so that's there. One's a next to this one here like this you see goes in like that yes there you go now we are cooperating on cooking with the gas das ist richtig the tuben mit the gluen und the coordinating uh, the other reason i'm using a glass chopping board is because it won't stick to this it's not going to stick to it the last thing i want to do is end up with this glue to the chopping board because that would be kind of suck now it won't stick to your cutting mat either but if you are doing this i would recommend just laying something down not just going straight on your cutting mat unless you know for certain that that cutting mat is straight true and flat and not like me because i've got two tables together and there's a gap here and it's not quite straight and it's not brilliant brilliant right so that's those in have to hope this is all lined up nicely turn it upside down I'm going to push the two halves together a bit more just to make sure they're joined here correctly oh, stressful 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 this is quite stressful that wasn't improperly that wasn't improperly there we go thought it felt a bit bulgy 
Now for the long pieces, which is basically exactly the same technique, but with these ones, it won't come out on camera, but it might come out on camera. There's a little tab, but it only goes halfway up. If you can see it there, you have to make sure that the, the, the tab is at the bottom. So it will be, when I'm gluing it upside down, it's at the top. But if you're gluing it this way up, it will be at the bottom. So I need to make sure that's the case. I'm going to slide these in. These should go in quite nicely now. That needs to squish. That needs some glue. Glue. I'm sure this is the lowest, least interesting thing you've ever watched me do. I mean, I could film denubbing. That would be that would be that would be the most least interesting thing I could ever do film doing. And you would hate me forever. Trust me. If I if I spent twenty if I filmed forty five minutes of me denubbing, you'd just want to just go off and become a nun or something. Okay, so that's in there, that's in there, that's in there. Uh, yep. Got that one there. So if you're doing this upside down, make sure the nub is at the top of the bar. If you're doing it the right way up, which I don't recommend because it seems to be impossible, make sure the nub is the other way up and the nub's at the bottom. So I need to go in and apply the glue. Now I'm going to be quite generous here because I want no shenanigans. I need this stuff to set and set good. Set and set good. That's not even real English. This front one doesn't seem to want to fit very well. This one's come out. Brilliant. Does seem to be a bit of a, a spread on these two, so I'm just going to glue these two and hold them for a second. Because this part here seems to be kind of spread apart a little bit and I know this is all the way off camera so apologies give that a bit of a, a bit of a blow now you two stay there blowing on it doesn't actually help it just makes me feel like I'm doing something helpful So what I'm going to do is get myself some dip, a real little bit of dip, and I'm just going to get a bigger piece of tape, because that was big enough. I'm just going to use the tape to hold it in place by pulling it tight, and hopefully that should. Oh, I'm a fool. I'm an idiot. Hopefully that should push those two together a little bit more. Now I'll just go and put all these back in again, should I? You know what I'll do? I'll glue them as I go. I'll glue them as I go. Boop. Boop. It's like watching a master at work just without the master part. Caution, idiot working. Let's put that in there first, do it the fast way. Squish. And what you have to hope, and really have to hope, is that this all comes out straight and true. Because if it doesn't, I wouldn't like to think what the consequences of that might be other than let's just be honest ass because this needs to sit on top of the whole thing and if it's not straight and true it might still go together but it's going to look a bit shonky that one in there so yeah be generous with your glue you can clean up lumps and bumps later. It's not a problem. And then the last one goes in there like that. We'll see. So 
So I'm going to just hold that for a second. Because this end was all right. The other end seemed to be a bit splayed out. So make sure everything's in and true. I've got a fingerprint there in glue now. But again, don't worry if you get a fingerprint, a gluey fingerprint. You can sand it out. More glue on those just to make sure because these were looking a little dubious. It's a bit messy, but like I say, this is the underside anyway, so you're not going to see it. But it doesn't do any harm. So let's just make sure that's all straight. Give it a look down. Even though it's got tape on one end. I'm just looking down it now. Looks pretty straightforward. I need to take this tape off now, and this is where it gets all horribly wrong. Okay, so that glue set quite nicely. So that is there. And what I need to do now is let this set. So I'm just going to go over these top bits again, just to make sure, because they were being a bit ribald. Is that a word? Ribald? 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 A bit of a pain. Especially this top bit. So I'm going to give that a second. Whew. That was stressful. That was right stressful. That was blimey Riley. Okay, so that's all there. Now you can see now it's just about straight. There is a bit of a in the middle. So what I need to do now is, first of all, throw the lid everywhere, put the glue away, get myself some books. Uh, I have The Public Life of the Street Pigeon by Eric Sims. And I have A Symbol's Life by Alexander Orlov. Both very dusty. There's a bookmark in that. That means somebody's actually read that book. Really? Somebody actually read the, the public life of the street pigeon. Uh, probably the mother or the father. Right. I'll go and let that dry for an hour. When we come back, we'll do the next bit. Back in a moment. It, who's that going to be now? Hello? stripes on the wings. I need a CQC compliant technique for masking off. Uh, stripes? Wings? Have you got the right number? The wings on the Colonial Viper need to mask off the stripes. Wait, you're not Otacon. Colonial Viper? Dude, that series was like two years ago. You really got the wrong video build series. Okay, um, in order to facilitate good communication, dial slowly and carefully. Carefully? Got it. You know, you're much less annoying than Otacon. Uh, thanks, I guess. That was weird. Okay, right, so while the spine is drying, time to move on to the next two steps. We'll get these two steps done, then we'll call it an episode. I know it's not been much going on in this episode, but it's just because that spine took a while and these are just bits of gluing. Um, but like I said in, earlier on, with this bill, because there are some fiddly bits and kind of ways you have to do it that I've found out, I'd rather show you the building parts where I think you need to be aware of how to do it. So I won't show you every step of building, but I will show you some. So first we've got to put these little clumps on these uh, and then we've got to build these brace structures here. There's four of those. So thankfully it's very easy. I've done one here already. This has got the uh, the little bits on it. This, this, I don't know what you really call them. Bracing points. I'm using the word bracing a lot in this video. It's really bracing. This is dead easy. 
Uh, let's have a look. We've got four of these little dudes. Sixteen of these. Now, uh, I have noticed, uh, like on the other tubes on these, and if it'll come out on camera, but there are some injection mold points along here. Um, and what I'm going to do on the spine, I didn't need to do everything, sort of deal with all of them because some of them could just be sanded away, the ones you'd see. Uh, and I have left some because you're not going to see them, they're out of view, so they're fine. These you possibly will see if you look where the, the, the module will be here, you'll see these potentially. So I'm going to have to fill these in, so we'll do that later on. But for now, let's just get these little puppies on. Couldn't be easier. All we need to do is put a little glue in there like that, we'll see. Get our little device. It's got a little tooth on the inside, if you can see it, because my thumb's in the way. Uh, and it just slides on there. We'll just do them all, then we'll wiggle them. And again, because this glue doesn't set instantly, unlike CA glue, you do have a few moments to adjust and wiggle. So we'll get those on. Do it slightly off camera, brilliant. There we go. Okay, so just make sure those are all straight. Check them for lining upness. Yep, they're all lined up. So we're just going to put a touch of glue on the back here. Just straighten that one up a little bit. Touch of glue on the back just to get some extra stickiness going on. Do -do. Remember, the glue will go down between the two pieces. It'll go into the gap because of the capillary actions. Shake your hands again today. So that is those on. I'll just make sure they're straight. Now look at these don't actually pin into anything later on. They do join up with the rest of the framework, but they don't actually have any little pins inside, so it's not the end of the world if they're not lined up. So the next step, that's that step, so I've got both of those made. The next step is fiddly times. Now this is where you need to pay attention. You see here you've got parts um, Q18, which is this one. You have K15B, which is this one, which I'm keeping separate so I know which is which. And you have K17B, which is that one. They both look exactly the same, but they're different numbers, so I'm keeping them separate. Now it also mentions part B63 here. Now the reason it has don't glue is because you don't actually need this part yet. This goes on well later on in the instructions. The reason you're going to use this is to make sure these are all lined up okay. What we're basically going to make is these, these things. These go on the sides of each of the fore and aft modules, either uh, end of the, the passenger module basically. There's all the equipment in here and you need to get these angles about right, not perfectly right, there'll still be some flex when it's all glued and you can adjust it, but you need to kind of get them about right. So we need to use uh, part B63 as an template. So let me go and get the bits and we'll do that. Okay, right, so you can see I've got part B63 here. I'm not taking it off the sprue, because if I take it off the sprue, I'm just gonna lose it. I know it's big, but I'll still lose it. I'm an idiot, I can't help it. So we're gonna leave that where it is, just keep it on the sprue for ease. Now what we need to do is we have these three parts. Uh, the main back wall there, which is just two pegs that slot in here, and then either piece, on these pieces, you can see, if I do it on camera, there's two pins in the middle far apart, and there's two pins in the middle close together. The close together ones are the ones that go into this. Now there's also massive eject pin marks, but you're not gonna see these, so I'm not gonna worry about filling these in. If I, if I need to later on, I will do with some sprue glue, but as far as I can tell, you're not gonna be able to really see these. Not unless you're kind of looking from the other side, and you can't, so there you go. So, take this piece. Oh, one other thing I wanted to point out as well. On one of these pieces, it's quite shocking, actually. It's quite shocking, don't you know? Look at that. Let's just put my hand there so it's not hidden. Look at these, these holes here. That's supposed to look like that solid and it's got these massive holes just from the molding, maybe an air bubble. So I'm gonna to need to fill those in with some sprue goo as well. But again, we'll, we'll do that later. So let's get this built. Now it's all stripes and lines, so it's kind of odd to watch, but never mind. So take this part, you want the holes on the inside and the ejector pin marks. Thankfully, all the ejector pin marks tend to be inside things. So this is gonna be hard to see because it's all kind of complicated. So what you wanted to do is basically, uh, part K15B is the one that goes 
on the top now and the instructions it shows it doing on this side building it like that so what I've done is I've done one on this side and on the other one I've built it this way around so it's like that just in case there are any nasty surprises later on I'm not getting anything in the wrong way around uh, and again you need to make sure the ejector pin marks are on the inside here so you can use either end I tend to do one here and one there but also always make sure K15B is the top one so this needs to go in there this doesn't have any pins to secure it it's just three pins into this tube so what we need to do is get ourselves the glues and quite liberally coat this part here like that we'll see but we're not going to put any glue on the bottom pin because you don't want to glue it to the base part the base part is just a template that's what we need to do is line it all up it doesn't have to be spot on lined up with the template for now you just need to get it in so the glue sets and appreciate my hands in the way but I'll show you in a second so I'm just going to hold it here for a second just to let that glue start to bite it's also way up at the top of the camera but I can't move it now there we go it's better so I just want to hold it there for a moment just to get the glue to bite it'll take a few moments okay so what you can see if I've got a pointy stick pointy stick anyone what you can see is basically this piece and I realize it's kind of really hard to see now because of all the white stripes everywhere Let's see if I can turn this around a bit there we go maybe that's a bit better this bar here on this piece needs to line up with the bar on the on this template piece now it's not perfect right now and I haven't glued it in because I don't want to glue this to that so for the moment I'm just getting it roughly in place so there we go I'm just looking at the screen now and it's like it's hard to tell what but I'm gluing and what bit is background but then might so I'm just going to be some generous dollop of glue on these interior corners there we go quite generously again if you get any blobs of glue don't panic don't panic at all you can just very carefully sand it later so I'm going to keep that I'll, I'll try and get it roughly lined up just to make sure everything's roughly in position okay make sure everything's in make sure all the little tabs and things are pushed in so I'm going to leave that now for maybe 30 40 seconds just to cure a bit more before I pick it up so back in a second okay so that's had about 30 seconds to just do its thing so what I need to do now again it is hard to see because you've got the white tubes and the white tubes sorry about that uh, I'm gonna go on the outside just with a bit of glue again quite generously and only on the middle and the top so get those into place it's just about getting those two in place first and then you can handle it and start doing the bottom bit so that should be fine so that is all reasonably lined up so what I can do now it should be sticky enough and sturdy enough for me to pick it up get some glue on the bottom piece here which is in place it's just not glued now what I will do again I'm being generous with the glue what I will do is very quickly just blow on it to flash off any glue on this on the peg put it back down here and now I'll just adjust it now so it's lined up with the frame piece so now we have all three pieces I'm going to turn it around a bit for you we have all three pieces glued in and this now is lined up with this part of B63 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 so that's glued in. So what I'm going to do is give that a few seconds now. I've just given it about 20 seconds there. I'm going to go back in with the glue again. Just to reinforce. And I'll take this off and put some more glue on. Both sides. Because you want it to work its way into all the little crooks and nannies. 
blow off the bottom. Ooh. Again, just to flash any glue off the peg so it doesn't glue to B63. So that is now in. And the good thing is this is going to be adjustable for about five or ten minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that just for about a couple of minutes. Then I'll come back and do the same on the other side with the piece that goes here, uh, B70, uh, K17B, which just fits on the other side there. Oops, if I throw it, that'd be handy. K17B just fits on that side like that. Do exactly the same, make sure they're all lined up and then leave it for five minutes to set and then I can take it away. It's just very important you make sure you don't glue it to the base because this doesn't get attached directly to this at all. This has either the engines or the um, the front of the or the back of the command module on it and that goes on right at the end so this doesn't need to be glued. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Now that's going to do it for this episode I think because uh, it's a couple of next bit is another couple of big steps so I don't really want to let's just remove this out of the way so you're not going blind looking at stripes. I don't really want to get involved in the next step too much because this will become like a two hour video and that would suck. So we're going to leave it there. Uh, as you can see, we have now done the spine. The spine, let me pull out a little bit. Ooh, uh. There we go. Get some focus going on for you. Where's my focus tool? There we go. Handy little tool that for focusing an old Tamiya pot or a Tamiya tape thing because it's not brilliant white. So it's not going to freak your white balance out too much. So we've got the spine done now. You can see the spine is all nice and dry and rigid. It's got a little bit of flex to it, but that's cool because I'm sure there'll be some adjustment. Oh, ooh, knock that over, why don't you? Hello. I know moment a bit. Uh, yep, yeah, still lined up. Cool. Uh, so yes, the spine's all done. We've got three of these done and I'm just doing that fourth one now. So they're all ready for later. Uh, the next step in the instructions, I say we'll do in the next video. What comes after that? Oh, I'll tell you, I hate folding out instructions. They're a right pain. Now that's done, we can start moving on to the the fore and after modules. I'm not exactly sure what they are, uh, but we'll go through these. You can see I've made some notes on the instructions here uh, after getting some advice from one of my followers. So we will have a look and you can see where those go on there. They go on to the sides of these modules. So that will be the next step, doing all this shenanigans. There'll be some filling to do. Uh, I will need to go back and do some filling on these. Uh, apart from the one that had all the, the holes in the pipe, I'll have to fill that in as I'm not the camera. Uh, but I've also got, not really on these, but there might be one or two little uh, eject pin marks I need to fill in. And we'll just do that with some sprue goo. Like I did on the nose, we'll just put a dot of sprue goo over the, the ejector pin and then let it dry for 24 hours and sand it down so it should be flat. I tried sanding some of these out, but they're a bit too deep on this part. So what I said earlier about them being easy to sand away, yeah, I was lying. It made me a liar. So yes, that's uh, that's all done. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. It's not been a very exciting episode because it's all been gluing stuff together uh, and that's not exciting at the best of times, um, but we'll crack on in the next one. As always, do go along to emodels.co.uk address here. Um, in my opinion, the UK's leading online model retailer. Everything you ever need from kits, tools, glue, paints, compressors, they do RC stuff as well. That's remote control to you and me. Um, and loads of stuff. I always say if they haven't got it, you don't need it. And what I mean by that is if there's something specific you want and it's not there, it's either just gone out of stock, in which case drop the guys at your models a line and they'll be able to let you know when it's back in. Or it may well be something they don't carry, but that's not the end of the world because either they'll have something else just as good, or if you can drop them a line and ask them, it might be something they can actually get hold of. It's just something maybe they don't normally carry in stock. I've seen them do it before, so they can try for you. They will always try. There is now an offers page on the eModels website as well. Just go to eModels.co.uk and there's a menu option for offers. They're looking at what they've got in stock and seeing what you might quite like and be, what would be good for you to get a, a, you know, a deal on. Because you guys have asked for, for offers and deals for so long, Pete Mate decided, you know what, we're going to have an offers page. So it's not just you know junk they can't get rid of, it's, it's lots of good stuff in there. Uh, and there'll, there'll be short term deals, they might last a day, it might last a week, could be a month and it's updated regularly. So always go along and check and see, see what's on offer. There's all kinds of kits and books and paints and tools and everything on there. There's some quite good deals on that page, so go and have a look. 
But that's going to do it for me. Uh, until next time, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And adios, amoebas. Bye.